Contentment is an internal thing. Getting in a relationship is not going to heal that deep wound of loneliness. It's going to just yeah. either make it worse or like expose it. Yeah. So, oh, another thing I would yeah. say in singleness is try to deal with those things. Because once you get in a relationship, it's not just your problems, it's the other person's problems too. For sure. And if I just am like waiting passively and not dealing with any of the pain or trauma from my childhood or whatever, then I'm just going to put all of that on my significant other. And it's just not very fun. And I think something too that I've grown in yeah. is if I don't have it, I don't need it. It's no growing in that word. You know what I need and you know when I need it. The drug. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Handlebar Podcast. This is our YouTube channel, and we're so glad you're here. And I wanted to tell you about two things before the episode starts. Number one, I just wrote a book, Big Jesus. This is out now everywhere that books are sold. And I want to invite you to go get that book, especially if you're a Gen Zer. Man, I wrote this book for you. My hopes is that as you read it, it will spark wonder uh, and fascination in your heart for who Jesus is. He's a really big, big Jesus. Go get the book. Number two, I wanted to let you know that we here at the Handlebar Podcast are completely listener funded. Uh, you may have noticed if you're listening to the podcast platform that there's no ads. Also, we haven't done a sponsor. We've just been completely listener funded. And I want to ask you if this podcast has blessed you uh, that you would consider giving. You can give on our website, which will be in the description below. You can go over there. You can donate five bucks, 10 bucks, a hundred bucks, whatever would be a blessing to you. It would definitely bless us and it would help us continue to build the platform, put more things out. We love you. We're so glad you're here. Enjoy the episode and don't forget to subscribe. Welcome to the Handlebar Podcast. Hey everyone, this is Handlebar Sessions. Yes. We're putting a little twist on things. And instead of doing the four of us around a table, we're doing a shorter amount of time. And mm -hmm. you're just going to get the real, the raw Sarah Bethany yeah. was <laughs> on the couch. <laughs> I feel so giggly right now. But this is yeah. where we go yeah. through y'all's questions. We have Joel here. He's going to give us a question. And then we're just going to yeah. talk about it rapid fire for 10 get minutes. Get in here, babe. So get in here. Oh, he did not just get down <laughs> on one crazy. knee. Here it is. This is crazy. <laughs> hey, guys. I'm Joel again. Um, so my question to you both okay. is how do I remain content in singleness? Ooh. All right. Okay. Well, I'm just kidding. <laughs> We're, neither of us are single but we have been but we have been and we have really different stories with mm -hmm. it yeah man how do we start this hmm. that's a lot yeah well okay I heard oh 10 minutes starting now okay cool okay I heard a very wise man in my life say this a couple of days ago he's a leader at the church I go to and he encountered God a few years ago and he said the first thing that he told him was I'm every longing fulfilled. Hmm. I satisfy the deepest longing of your heart. So I think just right out of the gate, I would say that only Jesus will satisfy you, whether you're in singleness or you're engaged. <laughs> this is or like an intimate married. setting. I'm sorry. I'm you're like getting like, giggly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I would just say that he's every longing fulfilled and he's the only one that can satisfy. Yes. Um, so if you're looking for that in a guy and you think you found him and you want to get married, you're going to be disappointed mm -hmm. because he's the only one yeah. that could satisfy. Um, but how to remain content in singleness, man, I would say find a group of, fr of girlfriends mm -hmm. and really go deep with them. Don't just be waiting around by yourself yeah. or a guy to just like pop out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Be in community. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I agree. Everything you said was so good. So I think that's it. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys later. <laughs> <laughs> what do you have to no. say? A wise woman. An a wise woman. Um, and no, I think um, for me, I really had to learn how to fully trust the Lord. Because um, I think a lot of discontentment was actually coming from the fact that I didn't really trust God as much as I said with my mouth that I did. Um, and so I think actually getting really real with any like moments of disappointment or things that were hard. Um, maybe if something didn't work out with a guy I went on a date with, um, like actually expressing like, man, I feel disappointed that this didn't work out or just disappointed maybe in like 
why am I entering my 30s and I'm still single? You know, like all those yeah, things, like totally. the timelines that we put on ourselves. Um, so I think I had to really learn to admit to myself that I felt um, either disappointed or upset or sad, but then also not staying there, like not making um, my singleness something that is bad that, oh, there's something wrong with me if I'm single. Um, that's not true. Like there's, it's actually a really beautiful like time in our lives. One of the most beautiful be seasons with God, I mm-hmm. would say. Yeah, totally. Um, because when you do enter a relationship, that brings different hardships. So um, it's like, yes, you have like your person, um, but it's like hardships and struggles don't go away. Say it again. Um, yeah. So I think it's like uh, it's you can learn to like actually really celebrate your singleness. And I think good friends help a ton yes. with this. Mm-hmm. Um, I look back and, you know, my early 20s when just like, who was I? <laughs> <laughs> but you're figuring it out. Yeah, I just figuring it out. But like I. And now in my 30s, my friends in my 20s are still my friends now. And so actually like committing to one another to going deep, yes. I think has actually really set set me up well, like in my singleness to move into now like being engaged or yes. whatever. So get um, people in your corner. Yeah. Community, like building friendship is a way to stay content. And I think learning how to trust God. Mm. I mean, with your season, with your season. Yeah. yeah. Knowing that his timing's perfect. His way is better. Yeah. Um, and I think too, I learned so much um, in my singleness. Like I think dating's actually really good and it's okay when things don't work out because you learn along the way, like your non-negotiables. And I think it takes going on dates um, to figure those things out. Totally. You know, cause I, I wish I, I wouldn't have put so much pressure on myself for every date that I went on. It's like, this has to be it. Yeah. Like, you know, this has Am to I be the guy it? I'm going to marry. Right. Yeah. And if it's not working, then I'm like, Oh yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and so actually learning this, like my singleness is a time of really learning and discovering. And it's okay if things don't work out or yes. you only go on one date. Yeah. Like make it lighthearted. Yeah. And, and normal to go on dates. Remove the pressure. Yes. Yeah. Of like, of thinking that something's wrong because you're a single woman. Right. There's nothing wrong. Um, like I think you can still learn and discover and grow all that time without that person yeah. there, you know? Totally. So I don't know. That's, that's my two cents. No, it's so yeah. good. Um. I would say if you're thinking about waiting to do the things that you really love to do or that make your heart come alive, waiting for that person to come into your life, mm-hmm. don't wait. Yeah. No. Like go on the trip, raise the money, mm-hmm. travel the world, start yeah. a podcast, write a book. Buy the house. Yeah. Like, I mean, seriously. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, and it's because I think that something that someone told me was if you are going after the Lord and you have your eyes fixed on him, you're not going to have to look to the right or to the left to find someone, but Mm -hmm. he's just going to come running up right alongside of you. And I think even though you and I have such different stories with Mm -hmm. Joel and Aaron, Mm -hmm. that is true for both of us. Yeah. In a way, it's like we we didn't have to go like searching, like, okay, who am I going to marry? Though it was constantly like a prayer on the forefront of my mind. I remember a mentor in my life said, you should do lots of fun things before you get in a relationship, like mm-hmm. go for it. And I would say that about before you get in a relationship and before you have kids, like just go for it, do the thing mm-hmm. that you want to do. Because when you are in a relationship, it's not just you anymore. Mm-hmm. You have someone else that you're deferring to that you're putting above yourself. And I think yeah. that singleness is such a gift from the Lord, but the enemy wants to make it, um, like such a oh season or like, I'm just waiting, you know, yeah. there's a difference between passive waiting and active waiting. Yeah. And I think as single women, the Lord wants us to be actively waiting on our husband. Right. And so it's like, don't stop doing the things that you love to do, or don't mm-hmm. just wait till he comes along, go ahead and do it. Get the degree, you know, yeah. get the job, apply for the job, whatever it is, for sure. start to yeah. go for it. Because I think that a lot of young women, and I see it so often, 
I'll ask young women, what is your dream? And they're like, well, I just want to be married and have babies. And Mm -hmm. I'm like, ugh, (laughs) you might want to find another dream because it's great and it's amazing. Not saying that people aren't called to be wives and stay-at-home moms, but I don't believe that Mm -hmm. either of those things will Mm -hmm. satisfy you. Yeah. Actually, I know they won't. Yeah. And I think that it's so healthy to have other hobbies, other things. So you don't yeah. lose yourself in yeah. being a homemaker or a wife or a stay-at-home mom. Though those yeah. things are beautiful. Yeah. I truly, I mean, I don't know. Maybe there's like those few people out there that that's all they're called to do for the rest of their life. But yeah. I feel like the Lord has more for women. And I think yeah. we miss it a lot because that's all we're waiting for. Yeah. And so I'll, I'll talk to girls and I'll be like, well, are you going to work when you get married? And they're like, what do you mean? I'm just waiting to have a baby. And I'm like, ugh. Yeah. I, I wouldn't do yeah. that if I were you. Like I would go find yourself and let the Lord show yeah. you who you are in your singleness, but also when you get married. Mm-hmm. So and I, I think, would have never said this before, but I'm like, get a job. Yeah. Do something. Don't just wait. Totally. And I think something too that I think getting to the root of like contentment has nothing to do with my external situation. It has everything to do with my internal world. And I think that's the biggest thing. It's like single or married. Like I could be married in a beautiful relationship and still be discontent. And I longed for marriage to help me be content. And it's it's like, what do you do? Because contentment has nothing to do actually with external things around us. It has everything to do with our internal state and our perspective and how we process our hearts, single or not single. Um, Because I'm, I'm not a mom, but you are. And life doesn't get easier when you have kids. You've seen you know? that firsthand. Yeah. And it's la- sweeter. Yeah. But not sweeter, easier. Sweeter, but not easier. Mm-hmm. And like in every season of life, I think that there's always the opportunity to either rest in it and enjoy it and find your contentment or to get on the other side of it and despise what you so longed for. My goodness. Because yes. it's more, it's an internal thing. Contentment is an internal thing. Like getting in a relationship is not going to heal that deep wound of loneliness. It's going to just either make it worse or like expose it. Yeah. So another thing I would say in singleness is try to deal with those things. Yeah. Don't like, don't shy away from uh, therapy or counseling or inner healing or whatever you need to do to get Mm -hmm. as whole as you can be. Mm -hmm. Because once you get in a relationship, it's not just your problems. It's the other person's problems too. For sure. And if I just am like waiting passively and not dealing mm-hmm. with any of the pain or trauma from my childhood or whatever, then I'm just going to mm-hmm. put all of that on my significant other. And totally. it's just not very fun. And I think something too that I've grown to, I've grown in yeah. is, especially in obviously trusting the Lord, is if I don't have it, I don't need it. Wow. And I I know that like the Bible is clear and like, you know, it says that if what it like, I lack nothing in Christ, like whatever I need, he cares for me and he gives me all that I need. Yes. And so if I don't have something right now in this moment, a a spouse, a date, like whatever, the clothes, the shoes. I was literally just thinking the shoes. (laughs) Yeah. Like, I don't know. It's just, (laughs) you know, like if, if I don't have it, I don't need it. That's really it's good. just this like, oh, I'm, I must not need it. Yes. You know, and I think it's it's growing in that, Lord, you know what I need and mm-hmm. you know when I need and it. And you want to give it to me. Yeah. But you don't want it to become an idol yeah, or become exactly. my God or try to replace yeah. you. So it's like in his timing. Everything yeah. is in his timing. That's so good. Recently, the, um, um, the Holy Spirit's just been pouring out at the church that we both attend and something that I hear so often now in the prayer room or at a service is just young students crying and groaning and repenting Mm -hmm. and being one of the students I heard a couple of weeks ago was just saying, it's not my timing, Lord, it's your timing. And even Mm -hmm. just hearing this person say that in Mm -hmm. the vulnerability of the moment, I was like provoked to be like, Lord, everything in my life is your timing. And I think if you're single out there, that's a really good prayer to pray is like, Lord, or repent of is like, not my timing, but your timing. Everything yeah. will come in your perfect time. And so. That's so good. Yeah. Yeah. Do we get handlebars? Okay. Yeah. I forgot. Oh. Um, <laughs> a handlebar in my single season. Goodness. I would say just get in the secret place as much as you can. Mm-hmm. Because literally now 
I tried to get in the secret place the other night before bed and I straight up fell asleep on my closet floor. Like I am (laughs) tired, guys. I have two babies and a husband (laughs) and a house. And I think what's so funny is we think that getting married and having babies will fulfill us, but Mm. really it's designed to, it sounds so like morbid, but to kill you, like it's, it's, it's self-sacrifice. It's yes. not about you. Yeah. Having a kid, being married has very little to do with your desires and your wants. Yeah. It's about self-sacrifice and dying to yourself. So mm. when you're single, use that time wisely. Yeah. Get in the secret place, read your Bible, do the Bible study uh, mm-hmm. as much as you can, because there will be seasons where you're asking God to meet you in your 30 second windows and you wish you had those two yeah. hours with no other responsibilities. So I would say get in the secret place. Yeah, that's a great handlebar. Um, I would say going back to something that you said actually is invest in your friendships. Mm. Um, bring them close, grow, like, celebrate each other, celebrate each other, mm-hmm. like enjoy your friends, enjoy that time of going to each other's house, staying up way too late, right. going like enjoy that time. Yeah. And when you don't and have grow in close it. friendship. Yeah. Um grow in close friendship. That's yeah, so good. I think that that helps with I don't know that feeling of like, oh, I'm going to be by myself. Right. And, and that's so real. It's good to address that. But like, who do you have around you? Yeah. Invest in those like people. just because I'm single doesn't mean I have to be isolated. For sure. Yeah. Yes. That's so good. So yeah. That's my All work. right. That was yeah, fun. That was fun. Thanks for listening, guys. Yeah. We'll be back next time. What's up, guys? My name is Zay. I'm from North Carolina. Um, I'm an active listener of the Handlebar podcast. Two things I love about this podcast is how practical it is, but also how authentic it is. And just being able to marry those two things together and just, you know, hear the Holy Spirit voice through that, I think is an awesome thing. So um, if you enjoy that episode, go ahead and subscribe here on YouTube. And you can also uh, stream on any podcast platform there is. Continue to check us out.